Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Smart with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. You know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. The scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today we want you to be fired up about teen and young adult Christian science fiction. My guest today is Sandra Lynn Taylor, and we are talking about her book, Before Eternity. So you know what I'm going to tell you to do. Go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee, or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Got it. Good morning, Sandy Lynn. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. Now, as is the tradition on our show, we always give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves to perhaps a few people out there that are unfamiliar with you or with your work. So my first question to you is, what makes you, you? Okay. Um, To start with, um, now I'm a mom. I'm also a traveler. And I'm a teacher as a, a professional teacher. And, um, yeah, I, I was a missionary before. And, um, yeah, I'm from Philippines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I love the fact that you are a teacher. Uh, do you teach little ones, like elementary school, or would you teach, like, our preteens or high school? Um, when I was in Philippines, I actually graduated as a secondary education, which is, I, I taught, um, high school. But then when I went to South Korea, I teach, uh, little kids. And then when I moved here in America, um, I teach, uh, from, I think, three years old to six years old in Montessori. Ah, oh, I love it. And I love the Montessori program. Really interesting yeah. does allow children to really expand and just be their their best. I, I love that. I have a very special place in my heart for, for those who help our little ones uh, become yeah. really awesome people. Thank you, thank you for doing that. Now, yes, it is a very author, rewarding job. That, Mm-hmm. Being an author, is that something that you've always wanted to do, or did you find that life simply presented it along your life path? Um, for me, um, I'm already happy being a teacher, but because being an author, um, I think if I touch his lives in the lives of my students, I'm thinking if I became an author, um, I will touch more lives. Um, to other people, and I just, I just feel like it is very rewarding to do that. So, yeah, I think I'm an author by heart, but uh, it's not like something that I'm always going to kind of dedicated myself to do. Especially now, I'm a mom, so yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. the title of your book, "Before Eternity." How did you come about that title? Okay, so um, this book is more like uh, post-apocalyptic and uh, adventure field. So that's why before eternity, it means like before um, the judgment of God will come to the world or before the, the end of the world. So this story takes takes on that period where before the eternity will come. Yeah, so yeah, that's why I come up with the title. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. Now, when someone is reading your book, do you suggest that they read it, you know, straight through, like cover to cover, or should they read it chapter by chapter to really make sure they understand what's going on before they move through to the next chapter? You know how some people like to just pick up a book and start reading yeah. it anywhere. Yeah. So how do you yeah. suggest that they read I- your book? Yeah, I heard that, that some books are meant to chew and some books are meant to swallow. But for my book, 
I really don't I have like... any recommendation because it really depends on the reader. Some of the readers, they they just really sit down for three hours and then they finish it. And some of them, they just love to just like take one chapter at a time. So either way, it, it, it's 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 good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. And you're there. There. Um, everyone is a little different, so I, I like that they have that that freedom there. Now, when you were writing your book, did you have to do a lot of research? How did you come about the information or the ideas for your book? All right. Yeah, that's a good question. So. It, I, I started it, I think, year 2012 when I was in South Korea. And so after my class, I'm just um, thinking like, okay, I'm just going to write something, you know, what happened to my day. It's just, it just, it started with that, just, you know, like a journal. And then my pastor gave me this uh, book, which is Narnia by C.S. Lewis. And then I started, I think, I started to read for at least 10, 10 stories in Narnia. And I feel like, oh, wow, this is really amazing. It really inspired me to write. And then followed by, I came across with the book, John Bunyan, Pilgrim's Journey. And he used uh, allegorical, um, like, style in portraying the characters. And so I said, it would be good to combine these two. It's like adventure feel, but in allegorical um, way. And so I said, okay, I'm really going to start writing it. <laughs> yeah, that's and then that, that's the start. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like, I like it. Now, when you when you finally decided, you know, I'm going to write this book, and you were really dedicating time to, you know, to each page, so to speak. How long did it take for you to write your book from from start to finish? Okay, so um, from 2012, and then it was published 2016. So, yeah, that period. It shouldn't be that long, but uh, so much things happened to me. I travel in uh, Philippines, Vietnam, and then U.S., and yeah, and then I gave birth, you know, so that's why it's it kind of prolonged. But yeah, so from 2012 to 2016, that's how long it takes before it really published. And yeah, and my husband encouraged me to, why don't you put it in, you know, in a book? Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I like how you said that uh, life happens. And definitely did even if nothing else yeah. just for becoming a mom changes you know everything when you when you have a when you have a little person you know they become your your job your career you know your your yeah. mom so yeah I can I can definitely understand how, how the book had to kind of pause for a little while I love it I love it yeah. No, the characters in your book, did you base them on any real people or, or, or did you just simply kind of create each character um, according to your own imagination? You know, I love that question because I remember when I was college, they said in making a character, you need to really put a really big foundation in the character. But I said, how am I going to do this? Uh, okay, so I really, I, I really uh, find different people in different walks of life, in different countries and cultures, and then ask them and interview them. And then I ask them if it's okay if I put them in uh, one of the characters in the book. And you know what? Some of them actually they are not on Earth anymore. They pass away. So yeah, most of the uh, characters in the story, I really met them in real life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I like asking that question because I think for so many people, it gives them the answers give them a little bit of inspiration because for. Mm-hmm. I, one of the famous people that we know, I think most people know who Tyler Perry is, and they know the character of Medea. 
And he explains that Medea isn't just one person. It's like two, I believe, two yeah. of his aunts, you know, a little yeah. bit of his mother, a little bit of his grandmother, a little bit of the church ladies. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. people just that are just around you and you and you get this this wonderful character. So thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Now when when you were writing, did you find that you needed to um kind of be in a certain environment? Did you need it to be quiet when you were writing? So did you choose early mornings or late in the afternoon or whenever the baby was sleeping? You know, like how did you, <laughs> yeah. how did you I like it. when am uh-huh. I going to write? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, when you're a mom at the time you're writing, so as soon as the baby sleep and I had a chance to write, Maybe when um, the baby sleep in the afternoon, okay, I'll find the time to type. Or when baby's asleep, you know, at the middle of the night, and then I feel like, you know, there's an itch, like, oh, I cannot sleep. I need to put it in writing because the idea just pop up, and it cannot wait the next morning. So I need to really write it, yeah, while it's still hot and fresh. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. It is actually depending on, you know, when I had a free time and I had a chance, you know, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and 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 the thing is, is that so many people feel that way, and they and they don't have you know newborns, so it's just <laughs> it's, it's just family or dealing with work and and life, and you don't realize how limited your time is until you try to add one more thing to your list yeah. of to do. You just say, "Where is the time?" So yeah. I, I definitely understand. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Speaking of time, it is time uh-huh. for us to go to a break. But before we do, can you please remind everyone of the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And if anyone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the title of my book is Before Eternity by Sandy Lynn Taylor. You can actually type it in Google and, and you can see it, you can um, order it in Amazon. They also have it in um, Kindle and um, in other uh, Christian websites. Um, and it, actually the, the publisher is um, Westville Press. So they can also order, order it directly to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. Okay, everyone, now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Buckchester. My guest today is Sandra Lynn Taylor, and we are talking about her book before. For eternity. Now, my next question for you is, um, when when you were writing, when you were physically putting the word to paper, so to speak, did you find that there were any uh, messages that you were trying to remind people of? And I say that from from the sense of I know that many authors will say. Hey, well, when I was talking about this, we were talking about peace or love, or we were reminding people to be kind to one another. Mm-hmm. Did you find that you two were sharing um, a, a theme or a particular topic throughout your book? Yeah. So the book is actually a story of forgiveness. And I would like to remind everyone that we are not too far gone because right along the middle of your journey or the end of your journey. It's just one call away from from God through prayer. And he can really help us to really get back on track to where we lost that path. I think it's a really beautiful reminder because sometimes, you know, as a Christian, even even, um, uh, as a person, we sometimes really feel discouraged and full of guilt like, you know, I don't know if, you know, I can make it up. I don't know if I can make it right, you know, with my relationship, with 
with God, with with everything that's going on with my life, and and just to really, you know, understand that there is forgiveness, and uh, and right there in there, it's always available for everyone, and that's I think the message of the book is is that love and acceptance of the one who really created us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh, wow. Thank you for, for sharing that. Now, for, for so many people, writing for them is more than just like a job or a career or something that they do, but they, they feel a certain amount of enlightenment or that, that God is kind of sharing through them and, and they're writing um, the message of love, or like you're saying, uh, uh, the message of forgiveness, or reminding people to simply be amazing, you know, um, and they yeah. find that it becomes a spiritual experience for them. Do you do you find, um, did you have any similar experience like that? Yes, um, definitely. Like, um, where where I came from, you know, I am not really rooted or founded in, you know, in Christianity. I was actually raised as a pagan and, you know, it's really somehow amazing how, you know, from that, that place where I came from, it's like darkness to light. I really appreciate like how the beauty of, you know, God's redemption in my life. And yeah, I, I can say that, you know, like I think I just had this, um, passion to write is because I just cannot help myself not to testify of the goodness of God, of how, you know, he amazingly, you know, like from that mud or from that uh, peat and then now from from this. I know it, it, I, I'm still not really perf- perfecting the, the path where I am presently right now. But as to what I see when I look back at me before and from now, I I can really say, yes, it is really like writing for me is just to really testify of the goodness of God. It's not something about career. It's not something about, but it's more like a passion. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And thank you so much for, for sharing that because, I think for so many people, they don't realize how far people come spiritually and that people, Mm -hmm. most folks just assume that if someone is a Christian now or they talk about faith now, that they, that they've always been that way. And for so many people, we've, I've had other authors on that say, I wasn't raised a Christian. I wasn't, you know, my parents didn't raise us that way. So I've had to do this journey on my own. So, Mm -hmm. you know, thank you for reminding people that you go from where you are where you were to where you are now and it, it really and truly can be a beautiful journey that that takes you on that i i love that i love that oh thank you now if you could say words of encouragement to your younger self because you're definitely inspiring people right now if you could go back and let's say leave a letter or a note to your younger self to encourage yourself. What would you say? Do you have any idea of, of what you what you think you needed to hear back then in order to be um, the awesome person that you are now? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know it's just so funny because that part of my uh, chapter of, of one of my book, I actually talk to myself. So <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, well. Um, well, I can say uh, to myself or to y- my younger self, like, life is a journey. It always has the, not only ups and downs, but a lot of twists. But you should push more, never give up, especially never be complacent or procrastinate. It's like, just just don't let, you know, like the the distraction or so much trials in life really stop you from 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 discovering who or what you are or what is the destiny that you that is awaiting for you yeah just you know keep pushing and you know it it will be worth it it will be worth it in the end yeah so seize the moment and 
live in the present moment and enjoy every, you know, every day. Yeah, that's uh, that's how I'm going to yeah to remind myself. Uh huh. Uh huh. I love it. I love it. Now, were you at uh, any particular age, if you can remember, when you realized that not only did words have power, but that your words had power, be it that they were the words that you spoke or they were the words you wrote, um, but that they they had power, that they could make things happen, they could make things change? Yeah, I love that question. Um, I think I always see it when I was young. I, I always see that um, people really um, consider uh, what I said. But I think it it became so clear to me when I started to become a teacher. And um, be, being a teacher, you touch um, lives. Sometimes you gave um, your students advice. And then sometimes, you know, you just, you know, be there for them. And just those a piece of words that I said, and then seeing um, these students from where they are now, sometimes they, they go talk to me and they say thank you because, you know, that became, you know, like it served as um, a hope for them. And, and it somehow really clicked to me that, you know, words are really powerful and it's like it, it, it can really heal someone it's actually it can even wound but um for me you know I, as i see it like seeing um people you know um being in a place where they where they were where they are and um, you kind of contributed to just some piece of advice or something that really connects yeah yeah so i started it i think to really see it when i when i started to become a teacher yeah Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can, and I can under, I can understand that. And especially in being in the position of teacher and teaching another person, uh, you have such an influence over those that are looking to you for, for knowledge. And I think the teachers that really understand that their purpose or their calling is so much, so much more than just um, teaching children how to repeat things or how to how to yeah. just do like one thing, but they understand that that they are they're influencing you know those little minds and they're helping mold them into their into their future self. And it's so important yeah. um, when I think when teachers realize that. So so thanks for that. Now for for some authors, they share that there are some pros and cons that there are some challenges, but or there may be some positive notes to um, creating their book or, or putting their books together. I don't want to lock you in on one side or the other, but I, I want to ask: do, do you have any challenges that you're that you're willing to share, or any any particular joys that that really stood out when you were going through the process of creating in your book? Yes, um, thank you. So, actually, it's it's. I, I call it not only a challenge or a struggle, but it's really a surmountable um, challenge at that time. So while, while I was um, um, creating this book and before it was published, year 2016 is the biggest hit in my life because that was the time I'm writing this book and um, my husband, um, he got, what it was, um, his company shut down. And then my my first child, um, she had a seizure. And then I had miscarriage. And then I was still, you know, like um, zealous in serving the Lord. And after my prayer walk in the morning, as I stepped in, um, I received a call that my father died. And it was really a struggle for me to write if uh, am I going to, to really finish this book or not. But... Before my father died, um, I'm so excited to share this to him. I want him to be the first person who will read this book. Because my story is, uh, I, I never seen my father since I was, I think, one, one and a half year old. And then by the time I saw him, um, I was 17. 
And by that time, he just started to become a Christian because my father's been um, a drug addict for, I think, more than 20 years. And then um, God is so good because he didn't stay like that. When he started to become a Christian, he grew, he became a pastor, and he served five churches. And by the time he died, he, like, exited the world. Um, uh, he is preaching in the pulpit. And so I just feel like when I am excited to share this book to him, that was the time when he, when the book was published, that was the time that um, he died. But um, I, I said that that's really a big struggle for me. Emotionally, it's really hard. But then... Um, it, it is it, it is published, and um, I I'm really thankful because those things from the past that happened to me, God gave it back double. It's like my husband now; he's in a better place. He has a a good job, and then my um my first child um he I mean she um she's really wonderful now. She's really growing beautifully, especially with her academics in school, and um I can say with my with, with um with my father, even though um he's been taken away, but I see how many lives that um he'd been touched, and also he didn't die from a, you know um a desperate condition or you know overdose drug overdose like that. So I'm just I, I just see that it that those struggles happen while I'm writing this book. But right now, as I see it, I think those brokenness will heal some readers or some listeners who can um, hear or see this book. So, yeah, that's why I said I need to pursue and finish. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I tell you, it is amazing the challenges that, that so many people go through, but yet they, they're still able to be the amazing people that God has intended them to be. And I just, um, I applaud you for, for continuing to walk in your faith and continuing mm-hmm. to do that which God has called you to do. And that is add author to the, to the many titles that you have, like mommy. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing. Because someone needed to hear that, you know, because they may be going through maybe not the exact same thing, but they're going through a something. And to hear that you were able to get through yours um, may give them the courage that they need to keep moving forward in their situation as well. So I love it. I love it. Well, I I tell you, I, I love the guests that I have on my show because you guys never cease to inspire me to keep moving forward as well. Sandy Lynn Taylor, thank you so much for coming on thank and you sharing so about and inspiring everyone. I love it. Let me ask you one last time before you go, though, to remind everyone the title of your book, where can we get a copy, and how do we stay in contact with you? All right. Um, so um, you can check um, Before Eternity by Sandy Lynn Taylor. Um, it is available in Amazon. It's also available um, in Kindle, um, Barnes & Noble. And uh, it also has an ebook. And then, um, yeah, uh, I also have a, a Facebook page, which is um, Before Eternity, uh, Sandy WP. And uh, you can also uh, reach me from there. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you again for being a guest today. Thank you so much. And listeners, thank you for spending time with us here as well. I hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone.
Thank you so much for joining me for our Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. You know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today, we want to get you fired up about your spiritual journey. That's right, our Christian walk today. My guest is Cedric Spearman, and we're talking about his book, Power or Performance, The Systemic Destruction of Church the Way God Intended. So go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Good morning, Cedric. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Sparks with Dr. Angela. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Thanks for being on. Now, I can't wait to talk to you about your book, but as is tradition around here, we always give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves to perhaps the few people out there that may be unfamiliar with you or your work. So, first question is, what makes you you? Who is Cedric? Um, well, what makes me me is, um, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, raised in Little Rock, Arkansas, um, got saved at an early age, uh, called into ministry at an early age. And from that point, just been doing my best to, uh, fulfill God's purpose and his plan for my life. So that's really what makes me who I am. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, we do have a copy of your bio, and I love that he is being humble, you guys. He is also a Marine veteran, so thank you so much, Cedric, for um, for your service, for your dedication to God, country, and family. Thank you so much for that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, being an author, is that something that you have always wanted to do, or did you find that it simply presented itself right time and right place in your life? Uh, It's really something I always had an interest in, uh, even from a young age, probably about six or seven. Um, I didn't do a lot of communicating verbally back then uh, outside of my family. And I found that I could better uh, articulate what I was feeling through writing. So that's really what got me into writing. And then I developed a passion for it. And from there, it grew into what it's become today. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. You know, I always ask that question because I think it is, um, even though it's a very broad question, a very general question, you never know what someone's going to say. I have had people answer similar to you. I have a, I've had an interest um, when I was a kid all the way up to Dr. Angela. I didn't know I was going to write until I wrote the book. You know, so it, it's so wonderful to hear everyone's answer that. I love it. I love it. Now, the title of your book, Power or Performance, The Systemic Destruction of the Church the Way God Intended. Why did you choose those words to entitle your book? Well, it just kind of came to me. Um, I had published before, um, and this particular uh, project, um, the Lord had spoken to me about uh, my experience uh, in the church and as well as some other things that I had seen as I grew up in the church. And I just got to a point where I actually became disgusted with what I was seeing, what I was hearing, what was allowed to take place, what was uh, going on in God's house that obviously he's not pleased with. And that's where that title came from, uh, because we, the trend became, uh, the church became more of a, a performance. It quit being about God's power, his anointing, his authority, and it became about performance. Um, entertaining people and this this sort of thing. So I just begat, became disgusted with that and decided to uh, write about it. And that's the particular title uh, that the Spirit of the Lord gave me. So that's what I stuck with. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that I've had those moments as well when trying to name something. And it's almost like when we get really still or when we're in our moments um, where we're really able to, to hear God, you're, you're, you're given the answer and you go, that's it. Yep. That's it. Okay. And you know that that is a God moment and you go, thank you. And it, it just really uh, ends up being exactly what you thought it was going to be. And it ends up turning um, to be very successful uh, because the title was given from God. So I, I know what you mean by that. Absolutely. Now, were there, um, as far as doing research for your book, I know that many of the authors that I have on, um, they're sharing personal stories, so there's not a lot of research there. For others, uh, it's very science-based, let's say. So, of course, there has to be research because there's statistics. Did you find that uh, you had to do uh, research for for your book, or were you sharing from a more, a more personal perspective of stories that people had told you, things that you had experienced, or observed on your own, or was it a combination of both? It was a combination of both. Uh, my church experience obviously uh, played a part in that. Uh, what I had seen and uh, witnessed during my my time in the church, and obviously in the ministry, uh, preaching and and pastoring. Um, also, that was combined with uh, information that uh, that I researched through the uh, internet. Um, along with some other uh, media outlets in order to uh, compile information and gain information that was going to assist me with with the book project. Uh, so it was a combination of both personal experience as well as doing some uh, traditional research. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, if I understand correctly, uh, you chose to dedicate this book to the memory of your parents. Is is that correct? And if so, why did you choose to do that? I did uh, dedicate the work to my parents because both of them were influential in uh, my upbringing and uh, contributed to uh, the person that I am. Both my parents were saved and in the Lord. Uh, my dad was a deacon for years. Uh, before he himself was uh, elevated into the ministry. Uh, my dad introduced me to Christ. It wasn't my Sunday school teacher. It wasn't my pastor. Uh, it wasn't uh, a neighbor or someone that I crossed paths with in school. My dad introduced me uh, to Christ. He laid that foundation. Uh, he put the word of God in us. Uh, he taught us. He set the example. And so I wanted to dedicate it. Uh, to both my parents, my mother, she was the same way. She was a saved woman, strong in the Lord, and um, both of them set the example for us growing up. And uh, they are no longer with us, but I thought it would be fitting uh, to dedicate this work to them. Absolutely. I can definitely understand that. There's nothing like that positive influence that our parents, uh, have over over our lives, and let me tell you, I have I have preached that a, a few times. You know, just how positive our parents can be, and making the correlation between when you're when my father spoke a word over my life, and understanding how important that was, and how reading our our scripture and understanding how God the Creator has spoken things into our lives and being able to really hold on and, and absorb that. So I definitely understand there. Well, so Jake, it is time for us to go to break. But before we do, can you remind everyone, please, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And of course, how do we stay in contact with you? Uh, the title of the book is Power or Performance, The Systemic Destruction of Church the Way God Intended. Uh, it is available on uh, any website that sells books, Amazon, uh, BarnesandNoble.com, and other websites that sell books. You can also get it at WestbowPress.com. And my contact information is Cedric Spearman at Yahoo.com. Now you know where you can get a copy of the book. And 
And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Vestester. My guest today is Cedric Spearman, and we're talking about his book, Power or Performance, The Systemic Destruction of Church, The Way God Intended. Now, my next question for you is um, challenges. I know that for some authors, there are, you know, ups and downs to the process itself. But for you, did you face any particular pros or cons, any challenges, any um, spots where you felt, you know, really empowered or inspired while you were in the writing phases of the book? There were a few challenges. Um, my work schedule was probably the biggest challenge. I am in law enforcement, so we work 12-hour shifts, and that could be difficult sometimes, uh, especially rotating from day shift to night shift uh, every month and that type of thing. So my work schedule was probably one of the biggest challenges. Uh, one of the other challenges I did face was just writing the book itself because of the content. Um, it's controversial content in the book, so... That's not always easy uh, to write about. Um, some of the topic, uh, the topics that are covered in there are are pretty uh, hot button issues, uh, controversial topics, uh, things that the church necessarily does not want to talk about, but issues that need to be talked about or need to be addressed. Uh, so that was one of the biggest challenges as well that I had to face during the. Uh, doing the project. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, you you said a mouthful there. Uh, my listeners know my son is uh, in law enforcement as well, and those 12-hour shifts are, uh, are a doozy. And I say, you know, God bless our first responders, being that they uh, are, you know, our police officers, our firemen, our nurses and doctors at the hospitals. You guys, these hours are horrible. But you're still yes, able are. to <laughs> and step up to the moment. So, you know, hats off to you guys. It's it's amazing. Now, for for many people, um, choosing how they're going to write their book, like the style in which they want to write the book, is something that they um, kind of go back and forth with. Did you have any uh, issue or concern, or did you have to decide, how am I going to write this book? Or did you just simply allow the writing process to happen, and however it landed, that's how you would present it? Like, you weren't trying to make it poetry, or you weren't trying to make it fiction or nonfiction. You simply let it create itself. Uh, that's exactly what I did um, after I gotten the inspiration to write the book. I just let it come to me as the Lord gave it to me. Uh, certainly, um, after, you know, writing it, uh, then that's when you start working with whether you want, want it broken down by chapter or broken up into parts and things of that nature. But as far as the work itself, I just let it come uh, the way the Lord sent it and uh, put it down and uh, when it was a finished work, uh, then I moved forward into the publication process. Uh, but it's not anything that I had to force or anything that I had to labor with because when it came to me, it came to me. And I knew it was going to be something special from that point on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love that. I love that. Now, how to read the book? Many times a book is presented in the way that you should read it from cover to cover, you know, simply page after page. Um, others have constructed it in a way that you should read it chapter by chapter. You know, you have to read chapter one before you progress to chapter two. Others have even written in a way where it's done more so like a devotional. You read a page or two a day um, and let that digest. How do you suggest that people read your book? Uh, my suggestion is to, to read it as it is written. It's broken down into uh, five parts, and within those parts are several different uh, subtopics. Uh, but to get the best out of the book, you would need to read it 
uh, in the form that it's written, beginning with part one. Uh, there's an introductory phase to each of those parts, and then we go into the subtitles. Uh, so the best way to read it is to uh, start from the front to back, uh, begin with part one, read that introduction, and then read the subtopics, and then move into part two, read the introduction, and read the subtopics, so on and so forth. Absolutely, and thank you, thank you for that for that clarification because I know that for so many people out there, you know, their thing is I like to pick up a book and just flop it open and I start reading there, or I want to read the last page first and and then the first page. So I, I find it helpful when the author can tell us how can we best, you know, utilize this resource uh, by reading it the way in which it was intended to be read. So thank you for that. Now for as, as far as the the book itself is is concerned, I always tell my listeners I'm not gonna allow my authors, of course, to give the entire book away. You have to purchase a copy to get all of the juiciness. But you kind of teased it just a little bit before. You were saying that you talk about some things that are perhaps a little controversial for for many people out there. Can you give us an example of what are some of the, the topics that you that you cover in your book? Uh, some of the topics that uh, the audience may find in, interesting. I do a uh, topic on uh, passive pastors. It's that portion is called the problem with passive pastors, and that just deals with um, pastors who uh, will not operate. Uh, as they should, and they allow the the congregation or the membership to uh, to ne- get away with things um, that the Lord would not necessarily uh, be pleased with, uh, because they don't have the backbone to actually tell their people the truth. Uh, so they would rather feed them, as the Bible says, uh, they will be turned from the truth unto fables. Uh, so they they would rather feed them the fable then tell them the truth. Uh, so that's a good subject. Uh, there's another topic uh, titled uh, The Preaching Pedophile, uh, dealing with the pulpit predator, you know, pastors who prey on their congregations, whether they are sleeping with the members of their congregations, whether they are sexually molesting and violating children, uh, things of that nature. Um, and then we there's a section titled Service Without the Savior, um, because we've taken the centerpiece of worship uh, out of the equation, which is Christ, and we fill that void with other things. You know, the pastor wanting the attention, wanting the accolades, uh, going after uh, things that God did not ordain. So those are some pretty heavy topics uh, that I deal with uh, in this particular work. Absolutely. I can see how you would say that that could be a little controversial for for some people. However, it is a topic that definitely need to be discussed because there's someone right now saying, yep, yep, that, that's what I was just talking about that the other day. I'm going to pick up a copy of the book because he is on to something. And you're right. You do need to discuss those things and address them um, appropriately. Thank you for, for touching on those things. Now, as far as writing is concerned, for so many folks, uh, they'll say, Dr. Isla, I've written the one book that I think that I'm supposed to write, and I'm done. Others (laughs) have said, absolutely not, you know, I have been bitten by the writer's bug, so I intend to write even more books. What What is your goal? What is your hope? Do you wish to continue to write? Uh, yes, I do. Um, it, I believe it's one of the things that I've been uh, put on this earth for. Um, I'm currently working on three more projects right now uh, that the Lord has given to me. So I definitely plan on continuing uh, to write. And uh, as long as the Lord will give me the inspiration, um, it's something that that I'm going to continue to do. Absolutely. I love it. Love it. 
Now, do I believe I understand correctly that you have written uh, two other books? Is that right? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Can you tell us the titles of those books and just a little bit about each one of them? Uh, the first book I actually published was titled Be Peculiar, Not Familiar. Uh, that book deals with just being who God called us to be, uh, not trying to fit in with the masses, not trying to be a part of the in crowd, but actually being who we are supposed to be in Christ and having that distinction between us uh, and those of the world. The second book that I was able to publish was titled A Message for You and Hope for Somebody Else. That book pretty much deals with uh, just various storms that we encounter in life, things that we go through uh, in life and in everything that we go through. There's a message in it for us that God wants us to get. And then that provides hope for somebody else, because if we can go through a thing and overcome it, then we can provide hope for others who may be going through, who may be dealing with tests and various trials, that there is hope for them, that if God brought us through it, then he can certainly bring them through it as well. Absolutely. I love it. Now, what would you, what would you say makes, uh, this book a little different than, uh, the other two that you have written? The, this book is different, uh, because I took a different approach to it. Um, the first two times I published, um, it was, Pretty much a dream coming true, just wanting to get my name out there, get a publication out there, and uh, get that that feeling for for writing and being published. But with this particular work, because of the content that was going to go into it and the nature of uh, of the book itself and how God gave it to me, I knew this project would be different from the first two. Uh, the first two I published uh, with the same company, but with this particular book, I wanted to go with a different publisher uh, to get it more out into the mainstream, uh, again, because of the type of content that God had given me for it um, and the way that the book flows. So that's why this project was different from the first two. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you really said a mouthful there because we do have to be very mindful of uh, who we are working with and not that uh, someone may be um, bad. Like, we tend to use words like this company was great or this company was uh, horrible. And it's not it's not always that. It's just who, who has the best resources to do That's the right. thing that we're looking for, you know? So uh, I, I like that you were mindful enough to be able to find um, a, a company that could assist you with that. Very, very important. Now, for the aspiring author out there, um, I always try to ask a question or two for them to, to really help keep them inspired as well, to, to go on and step out in faith. Is there any piece of advice that uh, you would like to share with them? Perhaps something that you wish that you would have known when you first started writing or um, a tip, perhaps, for getting through the publishing process? Anything you'd like to share? Um, the best advice I could probably give would just be to uh, to follow their uh, their heart or the, the instinct that the Lord has put in them. Uh, obviously, if if they've been inspired to, to write a work or to publish a work, uh, then that would indicate that their voice would need to be heard. Um, and writing is one way that we can make our voice heard. Uh, so I would encourage them, uh, if they have a desire to write or if they feel like they, they want to get into writing, uh, it's liberating. Uh, writing allows you to express yourself. It allows you to express uh, what may be on your mind at any given particular time. And then, like I said, um, if you, if you want your voice heard, this is one of the ways to do it, uh, is through writing. Uh, like I said, at the onset, I was a shy kid. I was withdrawn. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of speaking, but I knew that I could articulate what I was feeling on paper. And that's really what got me into writing is being able to convey my thoughts on paper. 
Absolutely. I love that piece of advice. I love it. I love it. Well, Cedric, thank you so much for coming on and spending time with me here today on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I enjoyed my time with you. Yes, ma'am. I certainly thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Now, before I let you go, can you remind everyone one last time the title of your book, Where Can We Get a Copy, and How Do We Stay in Contact with You? The title of the book is Power of Performance, The Systemic Destruction of Church the Way God Intended. Uh, You can find it on westbowpress.com. You can also pick it up uh, on any website that sells books, and you can get in contact with me. Uh, through my email, Cedric Spearman at yahoo.com, or you can call my phone number 910-750-1619. I love it. Thank you again for being here today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And listeners, thank you for spending time with us here as well. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Mm